All right, here we go. Kid, welcome back to Vlad TV. What's happening? Yeah. This is what, our fourth something time? Oh, uh, we're, we're, we're an item now. We're an <laughs> item. We're a thing. <laughs> we're the opposite of J-Lo and A-Rod. Like, we're, <laughs> we're still going strong. <laughs> right, they just announced that they broke up. Like, officially broke up. Right. I feel bad. <laughs> Is it messing up your whole day right now? Man, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What If J-Lo and A-Rod can't make it, I, I got no chance. Like you know. Well, she's, no. she's on the market now, so you know you uh, might have a chance. Look. You look, and J-Lo, what no, do you think? J-Lo, no, uh, J-Lo, J-Lo is the hunter. <laughs> J-Lo is not the hunted. You do not pick J-Lo. <laughs> no. She picks you. J-Lo picks you, exactly. <laughs> Go down the line, okay? <laughs> this this dude, the Puerto Rican dude, the white dude, right? A Rod, whomever, you know what I'm saying? She's yeah. the she's the shark. <laughs> yeah. We're I mean. the guppies, you know. We're the you know what I'm saying? But nah, it's, you know, that's that's you know, I feel bad, you know what I'm saying? They look great. They always look great. Mm-hmm. You know? Um so both them, rich. Both rich, yeah. Uh I don't know. You know, she got two kids. She yeah. got. Then he got. Doesn't he have some? Does he have some? Think he has some kids. Yeah, they're Brady older. Brady, you know, it was like the Puerto Age Rican Brady Bunch. They're Brady Bunch. They're Brady Bunch. <laughs> and then we we be Kenny Lopez Rodriguez Bunch. <laughs> It was like they were like a Latino Brady bunch. The Latino Brady yeah, bunch. Yeah, I was rooting for them. What are you talking about? I was rooting for them too. It seemed like a real, a real kind of couple. But I actually interviewed her once over the phone. Really? What was yeah, that? Yeah, not in person. She had a really dope personality. It's yeah. kind of like yo, like mm -hmm. she's actually like exceptional, like yeah. personality wise. Well, J you know, J Lo was in uh, uh, our movie Class Act. Oh, back in the day. I did not know this. Yes, yeah, yeah. You'll probably, this is where he'll whisk to her image. Okay, yeah, she actually played a cheerleader uh, in, uh, you know, as kind of, you know, like atmosphere or background in one of the scenes. It's like when she first got out here to Los Angeles. Um, I think even before she became a fly girl. Huh. And uh, yeah, she was, uh, she was in, she was in the movie doing her thing. You know, very active and athletic, and she, you know, I, I, you know, I remember her. Then she had a great personality. I think she had just come out from, um, from New York, from the Bronx. Huh. So you know, she was literally Jenny from the block. Right. You know. This is before the nose job. I, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, I don't. She, I mean, she, her face looked a bit different. Really? Then. Okay. Which well, is fine. If that's what you yeah, want to do, all good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, we all we always thought she was fly from day one. Like. She was like all the New York girls that I grew up, you know, trying to talk to. So, and 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 I liked. I remember, I kind of liked her, her, just her vibe, just her vibe, just coming out to New York to try to make it. Like I said, I think this was even before in Living Color. So, she was out here doing her thing. And when you see all the amazing things that she's accomplished, um, it's it's crazy and still going strong. Yeah. So she was, and she's back on the market. Yeah. <laughs> so was she that fine back then? Uh, to me, to me, absolutely. Yeah. And she looked, she looked, she looked different. You know hmm. what I mean? She just got out here. She hadn't been through, you know, that the Hollywood machine or whatever. Um, but you know, like I said, she she was when she got out here, she was like around the way girl. Hmm. You know, which is you know, which is what. New York guys are like that's what we like, um, but you know she you could always tell she was always um, thinking ahead. You always got the vibe like yo I'm thinking ahead like this on to the next on to the next. You know work begets work, and uh, you know just her mind game her her intelligence is just off the charts. So you know and you know and that's got to be you know that's got to be tough man to, to be to you know sometimes to be with somebody like you can't get away with shit <laughs> like, <laughs> like this chick is smart man <laughs> those regular lies just ain't gonna work a rod <laughs> you know what i'm saying they the cgi just, to kind of make yeah, this like god damn pull this over yeah, yeah. Who, who am i engaged to svu in this bitch <laughs> Well, hell, you know what I'm saying? Them smart girls, man, it's hard to get away. You know what I mean? Like, my girl's just, man, it's hard to lie. Every, <laughs> just break it down. She breaking it down like, bong, bong. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> you know, she getting ready to rip your alibi to shreds.
<laughs> well, uh, in sad news, uh, DMX passed away at the age of 50. Um, Just the dog. I'm assuming DMX and Ken Play didn't have any music together. There's nothing, but did we do a joint together? There's nothing unreleased between DMX and <laughs> No, Ken that's Play. not going to come. No. <laughs> that's not going to be part of the masters that Jay-Z did or didn't buy. Right. <laughs> right. right. No, but, um, I, you know, I, I knew him. Oh, really? I knew him. Uh, we hung out. We hung out a few times, man. Okay. And um, every time was was memorable. You know what I mean? Like, he's one of those people um, when they say, like, if you met him, you you never forget him. I met him. Okay. Yeah. And so I think the first time we met, he was doing um, my man Bill Maher's old show, Politically Incorrect. So uh, I don't even think I was on the show that day. But um, Bill hit me up and said, yo, DMX is on the show, man. You know, fall through and, you know, da, 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 you know, kick it with him or whatever, whatever like that. So I was like, bet, bet, bet. So I went in there. I went down to CBS and I uh, went to the to the green room where um, X was there with his lady. His lady was there at the time, um, his his wife at the time. Uh, he had, you know, he had, he had some crew with him and whatnot. And... Um, he was super cool, and and to my surprise, you know, he was he you know we start talking, and he was he was a fan of Kid and Play. He's like, yo, when I was locked up, I was watching movies. You know what I mean? Like it was, I was like, what? I was like, oh, dip. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I appreciate it, y'all. I mean, I love your music, blah, 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 blah. And you know, we started talking about we started talking about a gang of stuff, and then he pulled out a big big bag of weed and he started rolling a blunt. Mm. Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is all right. He's rolling the blunt. Now, this, we're at CBS, you know, right here <laughs> in Hollywood, right? Right. right? right. This is back in the days. And I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, I know, I know Bill Maher. He's, he's, that, he's that type of dude, like, you know, you can't be, like, smoking weed up in the, in the spot. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just all blatant or whatever like that. Um, but <clears throat> Lord, all this blade. What? <laughs> he's rolling up the blunt and things he likes, he hits it. And it's it's some crazy dank, you know. It's and he blah, 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 and he holds it out to pass it to me, and all I'm thinking is, all right, man, it's gonna be mad smoking here. This dude Mar, he's gonna be fucking tripping and shit. Then I said, but if I don't take this blunt <laughs> from DMX. <laughs> He's gonna think I'm the biggest pussy in the fucking world, right? So what do I do? You know what I mean? It's like, the, you know, and I was like, "Give me that!" <laughs> Hit that shit with the aggressiveness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just smoked, and the whole building was smoked out, crazy. And then I think even Bill talked about it later on the show. He says, "Yeah, well, somebody had the building smelling like dank." Look at something on the show. You couldn't let it go. Um, but that was a, that was the first time that we kicked it, and then um, periodically I would see him around town here in L.A. Like remember when he was doing those movies, you know, when he, when he had that movie thing, he was doing like the Romeo Must Dies and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was out here a lot uh, shooting movies, and a lot of times I would run into him on the strip, like at Saddle Ranch or at Dublin's and stuff, and he'd be there like shooting pool, you know, like hustling motherfuckers and shit. You know what I mean, like. <laughs> You had to pay twenty dollars to play him, and then you know, and and, and X could shoot, uh. and so people were just lining up. Be a line of motherfuckers, man. And so I come into Saddle Ranch, and he's just killing them. I'm like, yeah, what's up, Jack? Doing the thing, <laughs> schooling these motherfuckers, <laughs> you know, woo -woo -woo. Um, and it was always, it was always a cool time, man. Um, I remember one time, it was Saddle Ranch, and he was in there shooting pool, kicking it, you know, we, you know, probably threw down a few or whatever, um, and he had his car outside. He had like a some stupid, stupid Benz, big the biggest Benz at the time, I'm sure. And he had a girl in the car. I guess he asked her to, to wait in the car, who the whatever lady he was with. And but he also left one of these dogs in the car too. <laughs> so the dog, so the dog is in the back seat, and the girl's in the front seat. <laughs> You know, because we went outside, you know, as we were leaving, we went outside. And I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, yo, we got this girl and the girl, the girl and the girl, like this. <laughs> and the dog's in the back, like this. I was like, I was like, what is going on? You know, he was just, you know, he was he was an original man, but we, we, had, a, we had some good times. And, the, and the, the main thing 
that, that it was about hanging with X is, um, and my, my, my wife at the time, she used to complain about it because uh, after you hung out with X for like the next two or three days, you talk like DMX. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't help it. You know what I'm saying? I come home hanging out with DMX. I come, she said, yo, what's up? Where you, you know, where you been? Hey, the dog all thing. What's the dog gonna do? And the dog gonna think. Explain shit to you. Ah! She said, motherfucker, you better stop hanging out with fucking DMX. I'm tired of this shit. Gonna get some eggs. <laughs> so that was, you know, it was like a residual thing. But um, his, you know, when you had conversations with him, like you always felt like, you know, the passion. Mm. You know what I mean? Like when 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 he told us that he actually, you know, he used to watch our stuff when, you know, uh, back in the days, you know, you, you know, you believed him. Yeah, at first you'd be like, "Wow, what's DMX? DMX fucking with kid and play?" You know, it's, it wasn't about that. I mean, and and now you see with all this this uh, footage coming out about uh, X, you know, singing OG songs and classic R and B songs. Like, you know, he you know he had he had an old soul, and it wasn't just about his music. So, um, you know, these these ones, you know, we're, we're getting them more and more. We losing, we're losing. Um, some of our all-time great soldiers, you know, some Mount Rushmore type motherfuckers. Mm. Um, and we, we you know, we don't miss that dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like he said, um, like he said when uh, when they were when they were talking about uh, after Halia had passed, he said, "I'm just gonna act like, you know, you don't have to accept it. I'm we're not gonna accept it. I'm just gonna act like I ain't seen you in a while." Mm. That's what he said about Aaliyah. And I thought that was, I think a lot of people are going to say that. Like, because it's easier, that, it's easier that way. You know, we'll eventually get over it. But, I mean, that's a that's a giant we lost. Yeah. I mean, one of the all-time greats. Uh, broke records in hip-hop. Yeah. Uh, and we loved him. Warts albums. and all. Yeah. We loved him. Warts and all. And then maybe that's one of the cool things about, I don't know if it's, um, specific to hip hop I, that no I, I mean it's probably just just you know people that we admire uh, musicians and stuff we admire across the spectrum like you don't have to be perfect because we're not perfect and x wasn't perfect um and we were like so so what yeah and and because every time he fell down he got back up and if and if a guy wants to keep fighting, people ask like, how many chances somebody should get? As many chances as they want, as many chances that they have of uh, the 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 courage to stand up and say, yeah, man, I bumped my head again, but I'm not quitting. I got kids, you know. I got I got a legacy, and you know I got people behind me. He was always that way, and he was so transparent. I don't know if we've ever. I mean, you know, that's why people liked him the way they like Pac, because he was transparent about everything. Like, yeah, man. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. And we were like, Psh, yep, you just like us. You got flaws just like us. Yeah, yeah, quite a quite a loss. Um, left behind 17 children. My goodness. <laughs> Probably has some Jamaican in him. <laughs> don't say that. Don't be. Oh, don't, be, don't put that on. Don't, don't put that on being Jamaican. You know what I mean? Yeah, plant, Bad, a lot. plant a seed. <laughs> Nine. He does. Yeah, man, he, he put it down. He put it down. <laughs> he put, he it, put down. it down. The kids were ranged from, I think, from like a few months to 20-something years old. <laughs> um, man, just uh, so he leaves behind a lot of people that, that miss him a lot. You know, not only the kids who, oh, wow. you know, have various forms of relationships with him, depending on how sure. much time they got to spend, but also the kids' mothers and then all the relatives and everything. Whoa. Um, right. lived, a, lived a very hard life, man. Six degrees of DMX. Lived a very, very hard life because yeah. we were actually, and you know, people always get mad at me saying this, but we actually were right in the middle of trying to schedule him for an interview. It was already set up, really done. Yeah, you could ask Wiz Beats. He was sort of helping, yeah, he helping. Move, he was helping move the process along, um, and it ultimately never happened. But in, in the process, I actually got to, you know, preparing for the interview. Um, I, I did a lot of research on him, and uh, man, he lived a hard life. Man, it's like before even the rap thing, there was a, a story I read that, that he told about how 
his mom got mad at him at doing something at like six years old and like beat him with a broomstick, knocked a few of his teeth out, you know, that type of thing. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he would just leave the house to escape that type of environment, become yeah. homeless for a while and started just living around dogs, which is why yeah. the whole affinity towards dogs, trying to just escape yeah. just a, just a, a, yeah, a horrible, a horrible home, home life. You know what I'm saying? And then that of course yeah. led to the, yeah. experimenting you know with drugs which ultimately you know uh you was something heard... he struggled with his whole life but he he was trying he was going to rehab you know he was trying to to get a good and and one of the things because we were we were speaking to his his right hand man like literally for months leading up to mm -hmm. us trying to schedule this interview and and then when when he went to the hospital i was speaking to his man every day and one thing that he told me which was very interesting is that if you notice dmx gained a lot of weight at the end because for the past six months he had gotten clean, mm -hmm. and right. that's where the weight gain came from. Cool. So if yeah. you know people, like you know, I have people in my family who struggle yeah. with drugs. When they stop, they usually start to gain weight because mm -hmm. the drugs keep them keep them skinny. Right. You know, what I mean. So you saw him, man. He was fifty years old. He was getting clean. You know, he right. he was getting into his religion. You know, his his spiritual advisor uh, sent me a video that we posted of his. Uh, his first sermon that happened a few years ago. And he talked for like 40 minutes about God and everything. And yeah, man, you just never know. But, you know, he lived a great life. He, uh, yeah, you I know, saw, accomplished I saw, a lot. Did you see the thing that uh, Roxanne Shante had posted? No, I, I heard about it. I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I thought that was like really uh, poignant with uh, what Roxanne Shante had to say uh, about uh, about X. Um, and it had a lot to do with um, him growing up, uh, you know, in, in a troubled home. Um, I think, you know, she said his moms took him to the, um, and just dropped him off. You know what I mean? Like took him to the, to the, you know, to the orphan home and just bounced on him. And then boom, you in the system. Yeah. And the system is, you talking about New York at that time? It was fucked up. And like you said, you know, I mean, you combine that with, you know, struggles in the home, then um, you know, introduce uh, drugs into the situation. That's tough, man. I mean, for him to accomplish uh, what he did, oh my God, you know that that takes a strong person. But maybe it's it maybe it's just a thin line mm. between this person and that person, and what and what you become if you're not um, if you're not always if you're not always straight, but I tell you what, uh, the one thing I'll say about DMX, and this is this is for me personally, you know, people like them, people like DMX, he was he was so transparent, he'll make you look at yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. He'll make you look at yourself and whatever your addictions are and whatever your problems are and whatever, you know, whatever the things that are that are holding you back. I know he did that for me. He was just too he was too Flipping honest, you know, he makes you look at yourself and say, "Well, shit, you know, I'm doing some, I'm doing some things I'm not proud of, or I could be doing a lot better, you know, doing this, that, and third, or what have you." Um, but man, he just kept slugging and slugging and slugging, and you know, what I'm saying you, you rooted for him, you rooted for him the way you root for Mike Tyson, you know, you rooted for him the way you root, you know, you rooted for Tupac. Yeah, you you just root for them, even though you know, even though they bump their heads, you root, we rooted for them. Sad man, rest in peace, DMX. One of the best to ever do it. Uh, looking forward to the funeral. Oh, doubt. You know, uh, I mean, I yeah. probably, you know, not that I'm going to attend, but I really want to see the yeah. type of. Yeah. They you probably know, do some like quiet. A Michael Jackson, Nipsey Hustle type affair is what I'm hoping for, but you never know. The family might not want that. And the cool part is, is that the family put out a statement saying there's not, there's no GoFundMe. There's, you know, what I mean, there's uh, DMX had enough wealthy people who he Steve who really loved. Steve him. Rifkin got that. <laughs> Steve Rifkin got that. Yeah, Steve Rifkin yeah. got that. Swiss got that. Swiss got that. Yeah. The, the rough they riders got, got that. that. Everybody got that. You know, Juan, Juan the, the, the locks, got that. Yeah, D and Y got that. Yeah, D the locks got that. Got that. Yeah. Uh, um, Black Rob's not doing too well. I saw that. Yeah. And um, we had actually, you know, uh, scheduled something with him some months back and he couldn't make it because he was in the hospital mm -hmm. on dialysis. <laughs> so he's had these, these health problems for a while, 
you know, now you see him, you know, you yeah. see him in the hospital. He, you know, he said he had all these strokes and everything else Cha-cha. like that. Um, I mean, it's sad to see our uh, our heroes that aren't that old really ending up in such in such bad shape in their in their fifties. You know, like for example, I just interviewed Cool Rock Ski from the cool Fat Rock Boys. Cool Rock Ski from the Fat Boys, right? The last surviving member. That's right. Of the Fat Boys. That's right. Um, Buffy died at like twenty. He was seven or something like that. Yeah. He was five four, six hundred and seventy pounds. He was five four. Yeah, six hundred and seventy pounds. Originally, it was like seven hundred something pounds, but but uh, Rock, Rock basically told me no. He went to the hospital. Yeah, room. you know. And then Prince Marky D just died. Right. Who? Who? I mean, and I know Roski did this. Like Roski, like went underwent like a transformation years ago and got real healthy. Yeah. And. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he looked like good I, when I when did. We yeah, I haven't yeah. seen him in a minute, but I know he was he was definitely on that route. And even even Marky, you know, Marky wasn't as big as he he was, you know, back in the days. Yeah, he slimmed out. Um, he slimmed out. Um, but yeah, Roski made a he he made a conscious effort, man. I remember he he had videos out and he was in the gym and you know doing his thing, eating right. Yeah, I mean we're we're these are the days that we're coming into, my man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you've made changes in your your life and yep. your health and your diet. Yep, I lost 20 like pounds. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm 47. Looking like, yeah, you looking like the... You know, you looking like Vlad Affleck in this motherfucker. <laughs> Look at this motherfucker. Yeah. Um, but those are the things, I mean, and, you know, uh, you know the, the people uh, who love me in my life, you know, they tell me all the time, you know, gotta, you got to do this, you got to do that, drink mm-hmm. your water... Whoop de whoop, make sure you eat, you know, no more champagne, da, 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 you know, yeah. stuff like that. And um the ones that are heeding that are gonna get there. And when we lose cats like X and Marky D, trust me, it it's it 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 moves me. You know, yeah, because you you wanna be here. Yeah, no, uh, I lost a bunch of weight, and then when I went for my physical, they told me my cholesterol was really high. So I went to go see a cardiologist. Really? Yeah, and my cholesterol was like was like one seventy. Was it supposed to be it's supposed to be under a hundred? What? So they were like, "All right, what is that diet?" Yeah, it's uh, you know because I was losing weight by cutting out carbs, but eating more red meats and everything else like that. And then the cardiologist was like, "Yo, these red meats are going to kill you. Like, you need to get on a on a plant based diet." You know, me and what? John Sally talk. You know, he he's like my regular guest. That's super right. plant based. And he's like, yo, like you need to just cut out everything, <laughs> you know, period, really? and just eat vegetables. And I'm like, all right. Is that I, what you did? I cut out all the red meats. I cut out most of the chicken. None at, none at all. None at all. None at all. And then, you know, and I still do some seafood and I try to go mostly, pl- you know, plant based. Really? Yeah. And, and, you know, he put me on some medication initially also. Oh my God. Um, but it was like, yo, at that level I was at, it could potentially trigger a heart attack. I mean, Steve sure. Rifkin had a heart attack some years back. And it was, I remember he told me it was right after eating some uh oh, God. some lamb chops. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, real talk. Like a like fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it just kind of really? goes to show that Shit. I'm thinking I'm being healthy when in reality a different part of my body right. is is hurting because of what right. I'm eating. So now I right. gotta yeah, adjust but when you, and yeah, everything. but when but then that to to me, that means like when you're gonna make those those moves, you gotta you gotta ask somebody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yo, I'm thinking about doing this and that, and they may, maybe they would have told you, "All right, money," but if you do that, then you're gonna trigger this. Right. Well, this is why you gotta go see doctors. You gotta go see real doctors. real doctors, yeah. and real yeah. doctors, and, people, not, and not... people of color don't like doctors. We don't like doctors. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't mean, like. I mean, the the number. I'm of beige times... and I don't like doctors. Right, you know right. what I'm saying. You know, um, and but yeah, I, then they'll give you the program saying, "Hey, a little this, a little that." You know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So what now? What are you doing? Like veggie burgers and shit I'm, like that? I, I, I'm doing veggie burgers. Really? I'm doing what are they veggie taste like? Tacos. You never had an Impossible Burger? <laughs> no. Pretty good actually. Yeah, veggie, oh, veggie hot dogs. <laughs> what? Uh, you know, what are they a lot of salads. Yeah, salads. Hey, your, your your poop must be oh yeah sparkling. <laughs> Just, you know, poop, regular. Black poop is glistening. <laughs> well, uh, 
Soldier Boy just signed a new deal. Oh, did he? And what's interesting is that this is one of the, I feel, one of the only rappers. Like, no one after him has really still been relevant to this day that started out as a dancing rapper. Okay. Because remember, the first, like, you know, Superman, that whole, right, like, you right. know. He had like a whole dance. That, had a whole dance. Soldier Boy dance. Usually, a lot of times when rappers come out with a dance, that's usually their last song. <laughs> Not ours. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Kid and play after you guys still doing the do no a- after right you guys. right you saying typically typically right you it know, would like, be like a like a like a one hitter quitter right Laffy Taffy was a huge song Laffy Taffy but unfortunately uh, D four L didn't really have a lot of success after that right right you know? and, and I, I was and I and I know I've interviewed those guys like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of like Fabo and all yeah Fabo like was an originator but he didn't keep yeah. You know, no, like, you're right. it's like when sometimes you have it, this, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just a fad, it's just a thing or whatever like that. People kind of pigeonhole you. It's like, okay, you're the right. uh, you're the dancing right. rapper. Wait, guy. what are them Macarena dudes doing these days? <laughs> 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 hey, <Macarena>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the Gangnam style guy didn't, didn't really I seen them two dudes, they was working at the uh <laughs> They was at Tito's Tacos. <laughs> at Tito's <laughs> 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 they make a mean al pastor over there, I heard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Soldier Boy came out dancing and look. Yeah, he 20, did. So he's getting ready to drop some new shit. That's what you Well, said? I guess he oh, had the number wait. one song on TikTok that he just dropped. And, really? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. You know what? I I, I dig Soldier Boy, man. I fuck you with talking Boy. about an original? Like, he is an original. And if you listen, you know, with, with all the. You know the bells and whistles or whatever you know that come along with 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 him. If you listen to what he's talking about and the things that he's saying uh, that he's accomplished and what he he's he's a hundred percent right. Okay. Like he he did things nobody had done before and left cats with the blueprint. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. I think he's. I don't think he gets the credit. Well, he's gonna get the credit because he's gonna he's gonna tell you. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? But I, I think people. Uh, I think people. Uh, you know, they they sleep on Soldier Boy in terms of his impact in this modern hip hop world. Like mm-hmm. he 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 showed us how to do it. Yeah. To me, I agree. And uh, we had a classic interview, like the whole Soldier Boy challenge that happened. Oh like, God. Yeah. Wait. Oh, th- yeah. Is that the same one when when he told you about when they tried to come in and, yeah. and shoot him and everything yeah. like that? That was ours. <laughs> Oh yeah, and like the oh, I love that, I loved the, it. It was yeah. and it and it actually happened. That yeah, thing happened because I interviewed the guy who he shot. Really? Yeah. How's he doing? He's okay. He got okay. shot in the ass. Okay. He walked away from it. Like before. Suge. <laughs> Didn't Suge get shot in the ass? I don't think so. Did yeah. He? Outside the Roxbury. Look it up. Look it up. I know some things. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Kid Cudi just did a, a show recently on Saturday Night Live. Yes, and he wore the dress. He did. Yeah. He did. You know what? And I watched, I did, I did watch. You know, I've met, I've met Cuddy um a couple of times. Um, I met, I know one time I met him at uh at the Soho House over here in um in uh, West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And um uh I met him, he was really nice. You know, he told me, he said the reason he called himself Kid Cuddy or put Kid in his name was because of me. That's what he really? told me. Really? Yeah. When we met at the Soho house, that's what he actually told me. You know what I mean? I don't know if he was gassing me or not, but that's what he told me. But he seemed very um he seemed very sincere. So I'm gonna take you at your word, Cuddy. Okay. <laughs> but no, I always liked him. Um I told him, I remember telling him at the time that my daughter was like a huge fan of his. Huh. Uh, my daughter Christina, she used to sweat Kid Cuddy. And every time, you know, she lives in New York and whenever he would play in New York, she'd be like, I'm not in there, get gone. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, he's all right. No, no but I, I, it's nice to see him, um, you know, back on the scene doing his thing. Uh, I like the stuff he did with Eminem uh, that last time when he jumped out with him. Um, and I guess the dress was a, a, a tribute to Kurt Cobain. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. What, what you? What are you? Where are you saying that? Is that the Vlad snarky? I, I think Kid Cudi wanted to wear a dress and and troll everybody and get a whole bunch of people talking about him. Okay. Okay. And um, you know, right? Get up in people's conversations for whatever sure. reason. It was is that is that like like the Nas Nas X? 
like the Nas X vibe? I mean, you know. What was your take on that? Or oh, that, on what? The, the the whole Satan thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think these guys, like, you can't be surprised to wear a dress or give Satan a lap dance in a video and not expect a whole ton of people to yeah. have a, a bunch of strong opinions about that. Sure. It, it's, it's completely obvious what they're doing. As someone who understands the media who does mm -hmm. this every day of his life from morning till night i understand how you put certain things out there and the effect of them like i i could almost take a video and say this is going to get one hundred fifty thousand views based on this title and based on this imagery sure boom sure it, it, it's calculated moves they're all doing what they're doing um to to get people talking about them yeah just like how young thug wore a dress for a while to get people talking about him yes he did yeah. Uh, am nice I a fan where, of this? Where, where, right. Not... Where, do, where do guys get dresses from? Right. <laughs> Is there like a guy dress store? <laughs> well, apparently, Kid Cudi. Come on in. If you're a man, we'll put a dress on you if we can. <laughs> it's the man dress store. <laughs> you're wearing a dress. Got to look at your best. Even though you don't have breasts. <laughs> Man dress store. Dress like I know. <laughs> well, apparently the dress was actually designed by Virgil. Well, oh Virgil, oh Virgil, Virgil from Virgil um, Off White. From, huh? Off White Virgil. Yeah, Virgil, big time Virgil. Yeah. That went to that went to Louis. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, well. And I guess this is part of a collection that of man dresses? <laughs> Well, it's part of a bigger collection, but the dress will be part of the collection. Do they have a little black dress for men? <laughs> <laughs> Got a little black dress. We can see your breasts. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, is, it, is he coming out? Is Kid Cudi coming out with a line of man dresses? I, I, I guess. I mean, you know. Man, chef. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess Virgil actually designed a dress for Hip -hop, Kid Cudi, a man going? dress, a man dress. Um, yeah, I don't know whether maybe part of the, the dress is supposed to be for women or maybe it's for men also. If yeah, I see a bunch well, of guys walking around wait, Kid wait, Cudi could, man could dresses, you, I'm could, not. Could you share a dress with your lady? Like, I got it on Tuesday. I got it on Thursday, motherfucker. <laughs> Well, I mean, wouldn't it stop wearing my shit, Vlad? Well, a man dress would fit differently. You'd have to just—it wouldn't really fit a woman, right? I mean, especially a voluptuous woman, because you know there's not enough chest room, right? Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly, man. Boy, hip hop is constantly expanding. Well, well, how did you guys feel? Because you guys, I felt, were like trendsetters. Because you guys had the first like openly, you know, LGBTQ lyrics. Uh, in a rap song. Who? Us? Yeah. What 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 lyrics? Rolling rolling with Kid Play. Let me let me quote. <laughs> what? Gonna relax you ladies with a deadly charm. Wanna go to work on your fellas too. <laughs> Make you wanna do the things we do. That's that are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're gonna interpret. <laughs> Yeah, man. You go, no, go, go to work on the fellas too. No, like, no, that means are... no, that means we're gonna go to work on the fellas like you know what I'm saying? You're going you gonna cool, to see, you gonna see cool. how we rock it. Like, you don't have to explain. You guys were ahead of your time, man. Like, it's... <laughs> when did we become kid and gay? When, when, did we, when, did, when did that happen? The name of the group is Kid and Play, okay? <laughs> Go to work on you fellas, too. <laughs> see that? you never heard that before? No, I've never heard that before. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I heard people say y'all can't play like you know what I'm saying like they saw it, but I ain't never heard that. Like they they found it in our lyrics. <laughs> what are you freaking the Da Vinci coded kid and play lyrics? <laughs> no, that's not what that meant. No, that was you need to follow our style. We're gonna go to work on the fellas too. Make you want to do the things we do. Cause when kid play is in your town, you gotta keep rocking to the go go sound. You gotta. Keep rocking all day, all night, cause we're different. The light down the mic on the mic, so shake it. Your butt shake it down, girls. We got the best music all around. Herb's the producer, Wiz is the DJ. Roll with kid and play. Now everybody, everybody say, stop it. <laughs> Paul Pierce recently got fired from ESPN. Man. I saw that. <laughs> It's actually kind of kind of interesting because um, 
I had TK Kirkland on my show the other day, right? And, he's, and TK, T to the motherfucking K. T to the motherfucking K. And TK That's said- That's the type of nigga I am. T to the motherfucking K. K. <laughs> and he said his biggest disappointment in that whole situation Good was word. how ugly the strippers were. <laughs> Are you serious? You know what? I didn't even pay attention to that. <laughs> he was so disappointed that someone on the level of Paul right. Pierce did right. not have some better looking women. Were, they look busted? The girls look busted? They're, they were okay. But really? I, you, you know, know what? Not I enough even, to lose your job over. <laughs> I didn't even think to I didn't even think to look look you know what I'm saying? I just I saw they was in there with like massaging dudes and whatever, whatever. I was more fixated on Paul. I was like, I was like, he was looking like he was getting jiggy with it. You know what I'm saying? So what, TK said the girls was busted? <laughs> <laughs> right. The girls looked okay. T it was TK being TK, but <laughs> it was a very interesting scene. What did it look like? That came from, uh, uh, oh, man, what's the like the, the nasty strip clubs we used to go to back in the days in L.A., like First Kings and fucking, <laughs> oh, God. These are some, oh, my so God. But, yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah that, was a, that was a weird situation. I heard people um, uh, were... Surmising or or asking whether or not they thought like Paul Pierce like did it on purpose like like he wanted to get fired or he wanted to get you know what I'm saying like, I mean, it was his phone he was he was live streaming himself. yeah I know yeah I don't yeah I, I didn't get that I, I didn't get that you know what I'm saying because I mean you know you know it's it's ESPN which is ABC which is Disney Disney yes you know what I'm saying like you you can't you can't think that that's gonna that's gonna fly you know what I mean and I heard I don't know. I mean, dude, it's it's great to get money to just to talk about basketball. You ain't got to play it no more. You ain't got to go. All you got to do is come in a few times a week and kick that off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but if you look him up, he's worth about seventy million dollars. Yeah, already got money. Seventy million. So, right, so maybe right. although the ESPN checks were cool, they weren't really making any changes in his lifestyle. Okay. Not not at seventy million. Seventy million is multi generational right. wealth. But I heard he was really getting a million and a half. Okay, so you get a million and a half. So, so every year <laughs> your net worth goes up, you know, one right. and a half percent. Look, 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 Vlad done crunched the numbers. Uh, right. You know, strategically. <laughs> right. And maybe at, at one point you just you just don't want to be on the hamster wheel anymore. You just say, you know, I'm done. I'm just yeah. I'm tired of pretending that I'm not who I really am. This is this is how I am. Because I guess people are saying, oh, he's married with kids. He's he's already been separated. You know. Okay. Oh, so I mean, really, he's, he's, he's a, a single man. Right. Doing single man shit. Right. Like, like how many of us have not been in somewhat of a similar position as him in the yeah, in I the mean, last you know, couple of years? When you're when you're yeah, I mean when you're when you're single, you're you know, you're yeah. you're allowed to wild out. Exactly. You know what he I'm saying? Wild but out. I mean you don't want to wild out to the extent that it fucks up your paper, fucks up your business. Unless you have but, enough paper. But unless you got enough paper. Doesn't, and you know, he's getting offers from like, you know, Cam Soda, you know. Cam soda. <laughs> Different type of adult sites. Right. I heard Barstool was trying to fuck with him. Yeah, like he's gonna get. Yeah, he he's gonna something. get a check somewhere if, if that's Look, what he's he wants. He's a legend. He's an LA legend. He's, legend. A hall, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's a champion. But you know, I don't, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get old school when it when it comes when it comes to that. Like, it ain't like cats don't do it. It's just like, you know, people don't deserve to see that. They don't. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to see that. That's your business. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, it's also That's his business. At. Wait, and TK said the girls were busted. Hey, come here, the girls can't be busted. You gonna go, <laughs> no, go to said... IG? You go to IG? You better have some of them IG. You know them IG girls on there. You better have a mirror dime on there, or you know what I'm saying? You better have, you know, you better have the top, top, top of these. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't have no, no rusty buckets up in there, man. <laughs> well, uh, just recently they announced the remake of House Party. Yeah. So is that official official? Yeah, you know what? That, I mean, I'd actually known about this for like the last like two, three years. Huh. You know, that that LeBron James had acquired the, the rights to do House Party ah. and had enlisted the uh, the aid of um, some of the uh, producers and writers of the TV show Atlanta. Huh. So I heard this uh, over two years ago. Um, and I remember being excited about it then. I'm like, okay, look, dude, I already know LeBron. LeBron... Loves old school, loves house party. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to, uh, you know, I mean, he's going to pay respect to to the franchise. And, you know, the crew are over at the show Atlanta, that's one of my favorite shows. You know, I love I love it. They're, I think that's a great combination. 
to to do something new with it. And so I and, I, and I'm assuming that the pandemic kind of slowed things up. But um, I, it looks like things are ramping up. They, I saw they cast the uh, the two leads. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Who, who yeah. are the two leads? Um, I, you know, I, I forgot their names, but um, you know, two good looking young dudes and stuff look like you know they got look like they got a cool energy and a cool vibe. So they got that. And um, uh, another uh, producer friend of mine said that they're actually reaching out for people to submit. Uh, music in the coming weeks uh, here, as well. Here we go. Here we go. I actually so, uh, found yeah, they're guys. on their way now. They're rolling. Okay. Now. Got a light skinned dude and a, yeah, and a brown yeah. skinned dude. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Are I you mean, guys were... uh, asked to be a part of it at all? Or no, 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 no. Not not at this uh, not at this particular point. You know what I'm saying? But um, I just know what the you know whatever they're gonna do with it, it's gonna be fresh and it's gonna put like a new uh, new energy, new coat of paint on it. Like I said, I mean, I'm a, I'm a LeBron fan. Period, and particularly with the stuff that he does um, uh, off the court, and so you know a lot of the moves he's been making in the business out here in L.A. have been really, really cool stuff. He aligns himself with cool stuff. He hires the cool, cutting edge people. So yeah, I mean they're going to be fine. I mean if we're a part of it, that'd be you know that'd be awesome in some kind of way. But but if not, shoot, I you know I'll go. I'll, that'll get me back to the movie theater. I'll go. I'll get mm. my popcorn. You know what I'm saying? But I just like I just like how they're doing it. And like I said, I think. It felt like the like the pandemic, you know, slowed things down a bit, like it did for a lot of pr- things that were in production. Um, but they look like they're rolling now. So, well, yeah, I remember. I think in our first, interview, I'm keeping kid and play, and I approved this house party. <laughs> <laughs> remember in our first interview, we talked about how uh, LeBron had that State Farm commercial, yeah, where he was doing the kid and play dance. That's right, <laughs> the kick step. That's right, and uh, you know, LeBron just has a love for. Yeah, you old can, school hip hop. I remember he yeah. had the the music video with uh, "Welcome to the Terror Dome" yeah. as the main song, which is a very controversial song. The fact that he was able to push that through it just shows LeBron is LeBron. Yeah, LeBron is is awesome, and and like I said, you can you you can tell he has an affinity for like you know certain old school things. You know, institutions like House Party, mm-hmm. like Public Enemy music. You know what I mean? Like it's, that's probably I'm sure that's probably like his. His mother's influence or his family's influence mm-hmm. on him, you know, as he was coming up, and now he's just so cognizant of everything that's going around him. You know, he he wants to reach back into the past and and uplift some of these 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 different things. You know, he did the show where cats are kicking it in the barber shop and chopping mm-hmm. it up and talking yeah. shit. You know, that's you know that's legendary. You know, the black stuff that that in our in our history and and. Um, you know, I you know, I just I just love the vibe, man. I just love the vibe. I don't, I just it's just amazing how how there's enough hours in the day for for you know people like him and doing what they do. So yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, wait. And on that note, I, I I'd be remiss if I didn't say this because uh, me and him was going back and forth recently, uh, and you've asked me about him in the past, uh, Steve Stout. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I want to give uh, Stout a big shout out. I know he just got this big deal he did uh, with Apple. Uh, with uh, United, United Masters, United Masters, yeah, and um, you know, uh, I reached out to him to congratulate him because it's an it's an amazing accomplishment, and you know, you know, me and him was some day one motherfuckers, and to see uh, the strides that he's made, you know, we 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 uh, we appreciate him, we appreciate the journey. So I just want to shout him out. I don't know him and LeBron are like this. So dope, dope. Well, I actually had a chance to rewatch House Party. The first Did one. you? The first one. Did, yeah. Wait, you and your lady? Just by myself. Just by yourself? Solo. Come on, man. Yeah, you just solo. Watch that just with your lady. Sat back and watched it. <laughs> the um, original House Party. The original House Party. House oh. Party 1. House Party Who 1. Who knows? Well, actually, House Party 1 is just called House just Party. Just called House Party, right. <laughs> uh, I had forgotten George Clinton was in the movie. Yes, he was. The legend. Yeah, well, the, the director, Reggie Hudlin, the writer and director, Reggie Hudlin, is the biggest parliament funkadelic fan you'll ever find Mm. and that was his mission from day one he always knew he wrote that part for george clinton right and he would you know i don't know what it took to to get him there but he got him there and um you know he and i uh, george and i had scenes together and whatever and it went great and he was awesome uh but that was that reggie hudden was dead dead red on getting george clinton and he got him yep and he had a good time. I had forgotten that John Witherspoon was in it. The legend. And did he have the same wife that he had in Boomerang? 
Ooh. In house party? Good question. He might have. He might have. Remember how? The, the, yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole fucking, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, the yeah. The dark skin sister. Yeah, yeah, the brown skin sister. I think that's. Yeah, her. yeah, yeah. It might have been. Yeah, but then that's smart. But guess what? Who directed both movies? Rachel Hudlin did Boomerang. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you think about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And that's an easy find. Reggie's right? like, nah, nah, nah. Get old girl. Get old girl. Woo dee woo. I forgot her name, but she was awesome. Yeah. She was great in both movies. You know. And you know what else she did? I don't know if you remember, um, there was these series of commercials back in the days about, uh, it was about cookies. And she was like, come on, cookie man. Give me them cookies, cookie man. I do not remember Look, this. I'm telling you, look her up. <laughs> she was like, she'd be in the aisle, come on, cookie man. Give me them cookies, cookie man. She was a cookie man lady. <laughs> yeah, you know, those are those great actresses like the Loretta Devines, uh, you know, uh, that you can you can uh, um, uh, the Jennifer uh, what, what's the name she's on Blackish Jennifer Lewis mm -hmm. you know those are those those are those great uh, uh, actresses of color that you can plug in you know what I mean you need a mother in law bang you know what I'm saying you need a sister in law bang you need an auntie bang she's gonna give you that solid strong sister vibe you know what I mean. I mean, yeah, I interviewed John Witherspoon before he passed. What a great, what a, what a great guy. We were talking about Boomerang, and what was so amazing was that there really wasn't even a script for him. The, the wardrobe, he picked out himself, the whole mushroom belt and the mushroom jacket and everything. Uh, Eddie just sort of pulled him in when the movie was already done and just wanted him to do an extra scene. And he kind of stole the movie in a way. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But once Got again, that, ha that has a lot to do with, with Reggie being there as well. Mm. Because Reggie, Reggie know what he got. Reggie know, like, I ain't I ain't got to worry about him. All I yeah. just got to do is tell him, just boom, boom, wind him up and let him go. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He going to write the scene for me. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, look, uh, go back to uh, uh, him in House Party. Uh, 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 Reggie didn't write all them, them words. You know what I mean? That's, you know, he gave him a framework. But yeah. that spoon coming off the dome, public enemy, public enemy. Oh, that's that spoon. Yeah. It, he said, just look. He said, he got spoon hanging out the window. He said, look, we got these people coming in the house. Whatever you feel like saying to these people, you just go. <laughs> we just gonna keep the camera running, and he just and he just like he go, hey baby, hey public enemy, da, da, da. and he's just rolling. You know what I'm yep. saying? But um, and that was that was one of the great things about working with Reggie was that he would give you kind of that leeway. You know what I mean? I've I've never worked with Spike Lee, but I know I have friends of mine that have that say he's the same way. Like he'll let you he'll let you run with it. You know, yo, this is what we're trying to do. We we starting the scene here, we ending it here. You know, how will we get here? You know what I'm saying? You can play with it. And they give you that kind of leeway. And then they they walk off with the screenplay awards. Screenplay awards, Spike Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tommy Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh Robin Harris had that scene with AJ Johnson. The, the follow the drip. That's right. Was that in the script? Um, once again, it's a framework. Yeah. It's a framework. You're coming in, Robin Harris, you're coming in the house, you're looking for kid, you can't find him, you roll up on this the, the kid with the jerry curls, and then you gotta go talk to Atisha, and, and you know what I'm saying? However you get in and out of those your breaks, that's fine. Because everything he said was funny. Everything he said was golden. Right. So he would, and the thing about it was, it was a little tough sometimes because he would say, Robin would say, everything he said was funny, but he would say different things from take to take. Mm. So as a director, I know sometimes Reggie was just like, oh man, I'm a, you know, I'm, I gotta, I gotta match the shit. There's certain things that have to be the same, but a lot of times Robin would come in and every take was like a different take. So sometimes you just had to, all right, we just gotta take this whole fucking shit because we can't, you know what I mean? You you don't wanna, you don't wanna chop it up, and he was giving it to you different every time but there's certain um um you know performers that you can let go like that you know what i'm saying like you know i'm more of a you know i'm gonna I'm keep to it i'm gonna I'm a vary like a little bit um but you know my character is usually not the not the wild card it's usually got to be kind of steady and what and whatnot but mm -hmm. when you got robin harris you got martin lawrence you got you can let them go and, mm -hmm. and the smart directors you know let them go and let them play with it tisha campbell there's a scene where you're at her house she stripped down her underwear. And you're like, I don't know whether to watch or run. 
Right. Gr- great scene, by the way. I just want to yeah. just want to point that out. Thank I don't you. have anything to really say about that. I just, <laughs> just wanted to mention it. <laughs> uh, at one point, you were in jail, and yes. the guys were trying to rape you. Oh, I think you referred to them as rump wranglers. Uh, I will say this: that scene is uh, is difficult to watch today. Yeah, with the 2021 lens. With the 2021 lens, it, it's difficult. Uh, and um, I do know this: in um, some outlets that play the movie House Party, they'll edit that part out ah. when I when I start doing the rap. Aha! I've I've seen it sometimes where they they'll, they'll you know they'll get it up to the point where they're getting ready to jump on me, and they'll you know they'll maneuver it till the, I'm out. You know, and take it out because, um, you know, at the particular time, um, uh, d- once again, the director Reggie said, "Look, you, you're in, you're, you, you're getting locked up, you're in the bullpen or what have you, and these dudes are trying to jump on you or whatever. I need a, I need a rap about them, about you trying to, you know, not get, you know, slammed, basically. Okay, <laughs> is that what the that was called today? I don't know. Um, um." So I so I wrote that you know I wrote that Herbie did the beat and I wrote it and when you listen to the lyrics today they they're not they're not they don't uh, some of them don't it doesn't really wear well um, so right. it, yeah it's it's a little what what's the word it's a little grr, grr, grr. but um, at the time you know what I mean at the time there were certain uh, colloquialisms and ways that we would uh, describe um, uh, gay people. And they're just not applicable anymore. And they're not uh, words and phrases and vibes that I use today. Um, um, but, you know, that's, that, you know, that's what happens sometimes. But, yeah, I mean, uh, look, to, to people's credits, like, you don't, you know, nobody canceled the movie because of it. But, you know, there's certain outlets, you know, I think maybe I was watching it on VH1 or, who you know, it might have been, you know, might have been Bravo for all I know. And they just... And they cut that part out, and that's and I'm fine with that, you know. I'm fine with that. Well, there's another one that doesn't, another part of the movie that I think doesn't age too well. When you talked about good hair. Oh, okay. In house party. Yeah, when you guys were yeah. in the car and you guys were yeah. talking about girls, and you said, yeah. Oh, she got good hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's not the only thing that doesn't wear well either. Uh, you know, when play goes on a little rant. You know, talking about it. You know, if the girl get pregnant, she just gotta handle it, <laughs> and that's it. Handle it. You know, that that type of shit. <laughs> I mean, and at and at, at the time, my character was just like, you know, I was against that, but just even for him to kind of vocalize that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not on play. That's you know, those words were written for him, but and but and that was a vibe back then. You know, that was a vibe, man. You know, man, she just gotta handle it. You look at that now, you're just like, oh my god. You know, knowing I have two daughters and shit like that, I'm just <laughs> like, oh my god. Hey, so, Dad, we, did you try to handle us, too? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're still alive. Yeah, exactly. We're going to put you in a home, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we send you to Shady Pines. <laughs> right. I mean, because when did that movie come out? Was it 89? 1990. 1990. Right. So we're talking about 30 years ago, 30 31 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it was, you know, you know, time doesn't excuse every situation but i mean you have to look look at things in context like i said look the the movie as a whole you know 98 99% holds up there's mm-hmm. a reason why people run it to this day it's a reason why you know uh, hopefully when you watched it you enjoyed it cuz yeah. it, it holds up but you know there's a couple of things that that you know that we that i'm sure uh reggie and everybody else would be like eh, we could yeah we could lose that <laughs> did you watch coming to america too I did. Um, my girl and I, we watched it. I mean, it's interesting because we were talking about how back then there was probably a few things that didn't really hold up and they kind of try to fix it in the new one. Like, you know, there was a few like, you know, pro-female kind of little lines in there. Like, it's like, oh, you can't even grab a woman's breast anymore. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, you could not grab a woman with no repercussions anymore. Right, right. Like, you know, and like the... Right. You know, his daughter became the the queen and so right. forth. Um, and it's interesting because me and uh, Michael Jai White, we kind of went back and forth about this. And he he knows Eddie Murphy. He's, yeah. you know, been to his house. They Michael, talk, you know, and so forth. Michael he did not like the film. Everybody. He did not like Coming to America too. I thought it was a classic. 
Coming to America 2? Yeah. Was it as good as the first one? No. Is it still a classic? Yes. What do you think? Um, I would agree with that. I mean, Coming to America, the original, is you know one of the great movies of our time yeah. it, that you'll never get tired of, that you can always go back to and refer to it and enjoy it. Um, Coming to America, Coming to America 2, uh, was not as, as good a movie, but I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. we, re we really enjoyed it. It was... And maybe it's because maybe it's because of of the situation that that we're all in, you know, we're that that we're we're locked up and we're not as um, we can't roam the, the way we that we the way we once did. Um, and sometimes I think you look for those things that that bring you back to a better time. You mm. you you're watching House Party. You're watching Friday. You're watching uh, Coming to America too, just because it, it you, you hope it has the vibe of coming the original Coming to America. And I don't know. We enjoyed it. It was just nice seeing the the whole band back together, kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like almost they got almost everybody back. You know yeah. that that was alive. Um, I loved it. I loved the twins. I loved. <laughs> uh, she's your queen guy. I loved, uh, uh, you know, Randy Watson. Oh yeah, Randy I just, Watson killed it. Yeah, I just, I, I loved all of that stuff. Um, and like I said, it was just good seeing everybody. People were looking good. Um, uh, I thought, I thought uh, Sherry Headley looked great. Um, I thought uh, Leslie Jones. She was stealing every scene she was in. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I thought it was awesome. You know, my man, Michael Blackson in there, like, you know, I don't know. I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, it did it made, what, what do you, what are we, what are we talking about when you're talking about a, a, a movie or a piece of art? Like, does, does it, did it make you feel good? Yeah. Did it make you feel better than you did two hours ago? Mm. Absolutely. Fact. So, so coming to America, ah, I, I, I enjoyed it. And you know, it was coming on the heels of, of you know, like maybe, well, I didn't see it right away. I, maybe I saw it like after a couple of weeks. You know, I didn't see it right away. And you know, people trying to slag it and whatnot. I was just like, like come on, man. It's a good film. Like you knew it wasn't going to be the original. Yeah. You know, you knew House Party 2 and 3 wasn't going to be as good as the original. You just want to go there and have a good time, bro. It's not that serious. Yeah. So coming to America 2, man, we, I had several white claws. To that <laughs> well i finally saw the salt and pepper uh biopic oh did you because last oh, time i oh, had not actually seen it when we talked about it when it just came oh, out oh can we please get the vlad review of the salt and pepper biopic first of all your character looked nothing like you <laughs> <laughs> like that high top was way too high, like, high they, they added a good six inches that high top was a skyscraper <laughs> skyscraper <laughs> wait and you know the funny part is when we all worked together back then I didn't even have a high top. Ah. I didn't have my hair was like this. My hair yeah, was but short. If they had a, yeah, if they had but a, I understand they had to do that. I, right. get, I get it. That's the creative license or right. whatever. Like that's so, oh yeah, that's right. Kid did work with them. I get it. But yeah, it was like a it was like a building on top of this kid's head, you <laughs> Right. Overall, I thought it was a good biopic, man. I think uh the two girls did a good job. I think the story was good. I learned a few things in the process. I don't think I've ever I've never interviewed the two of them. Um but, you know, I do know the story. I was old enough to remember when Push It first came out. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was well made overall. I I really, you know, I, I think we talked about it a little bit last time. I'm glad that you had an opportunity to see it. Um, mm -hmm. It was, I, I thought it was really well done. Um, and I know sometimes sometimes these biopics get get slammed. You know, people, they didn't like the, um, what the they didn't like the Aaliyah one or they didn't like the Whitney Houston one or, or whatever like that. Um, but I thought this one, for for the amount of ground that they had to cover, I thought they did a really really good job. And just for me on the personal tip, um, just it was just kind of watching my my childhood, you know, like like we were all together, we were all together growing up before anybody was famous, before anybody was rich, before anybody uh, was doing music, and we were just we were friends, we were together, and to see that we all we all made it, like that's crazy. Salt, Pepper, Herbie Lovebug, Kid, Play, Martin Lawrence, and we all made it. Mm. That's crazy, man. Like that's yeah. that's eight trillion to one. Like that we all made it, and so so it was really kind of poignant and nostalgic for me to look at. I was just like, wow, man, and and you know, 
I love those girls, man. Like they're 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 they've been sisters to me. You know, they've they've helped us out. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here without Salt and Pepper. Without without you know without them supporting us and allowing them to open for them and you know ride their wave until until we got our our strength and whatnot. So it was dope. Right, and uh, Salt and Pepper actually showed up in Coming to America too. Remember? Yeah, they had a little, the little cameo. It in that. was dope, exactly. You yeah, know, it was like an old school movie, like people right. coming out at the end. And remember, exactly. remember Gladys Knight Gladys was Knight up in came that out. Shit? Right, oh, yeah, man. Exactly. Was, I like movies like that, man. Now, you know what's his name had a, had a, a real quick. My man had a, a a a big thing about that on on his uh, on his last real times of uh, Bill Maher when he was talking about the Oscars. And how whack the Oscars are, the movies that they nominate, because they're just devoted like everything. And, uh, trying times and like thing, and I, everything is down and the skies are gray and like thing, and I lost my foot and I think like that. He's just like, he's like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you? I lost my foot. Yeah, I lost my, I lost <laughs> my friend. From? I lost my foot. I lost my foot. My friend's foot. I lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> every everybody uh, every movie comes with a box of Kleenex and a, and a noose. <laughs> you just want to fucking kill you yourself. Fucking kill yourself. <laughs> he says, "What's the matter? What are you came in the uh, fucking movie?" He said, "That's." He said, "Look what happened when uh, uh, Godzilla vs Kong came out." The fucking breaking record. The motherfuucker's like, yeah, man, this is some fucking kick ass shit. Like, I'm tired of this, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of this migrant family that that, that can't find potatoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck? So, so to your point, that's why I like coming to America. Yeah, yeah. Man, we got some big musical numbers at the end. And, yeah. and like I said, the twins came out and you know, that shit was Ah man, it was, that's cool with me, man. That was an old, that was like an old timey movie, man. And I know, and I know it must have made. I know it made bread because yeah. people, people were starving for it, man. Well, it seemed like Herbie Lovebug got a bit of a bad rap. In Boy, the, in the movie? In the movie. Yeah. And I've tried to get a hold of him to try to do an interview or something, and he seemed to have just disappeared off the face of the earth. Not to say he's not <laughs> chilling right now in his mansion, like enjoying life, but I've never seen any interviews. He's never addressed it. Yeah. Like, and he was, I don't know. Now, they're going to paint him the way they paint him. Me, being in the music industry for a long time, knowing how things really work, what he did was phenomenal. To take a couple of girls who were working at a Sears call center and turn them into superstars from his vision, you could never downplay that. You could never. And he did the same thing with you guys. Did the same thing with you guys. He repeated his success with a couple of guys. You know, he went to work on the fellas too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, if you look at his track record, yeah. he was Diddy before Diddy. Yeah, pretty much. You know, much. he had other groups. You know, he had a, he had a production team, a production squad, uh, idol makers. Look it up. It was a huh. thing. And this is why I always say, and I think I, I might have said this last time that, that I was here, and I'll, I'll continue to say it. Um, somebody was asking me on Clubhouse the other day about it. I said, look, we had the talent. Play and I had the talent. Cheryl and Sandy had the talent. Kwame had the talent. Dana Dane had the talent. Sweet T had the talent. They had the talent. We had the talent. We didn't have the vision. You gotta have the vision. You know what I mean? It's like doing what you do. Like you gotta, you, you know, you gotta have the vision. Mm -hmm. You gotta have the vision. He had the vision, and he put us all in place. He said, "All right, this is what we going. This is how we gonna roll it out. We got the girls coming out first. They're gonna be this and that. Never had two chicks rhyming together before blah 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 i'm gonna make them uh you know uh strong and independent and not not hoey or nothing like that da, 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 da. and we're gonna set that up and then we're gonna come with their male counterparts these two dancing dudes with the hair and then and then here comes this guy with the streak in his hair and then got the vision mm -hmm. herbie had the vision um Look, I, I still I speak with Herbie. You know, Herbie, Herbie and I Aha. speak. Uh, you know, play play speaks with Herbie probably more than I do. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? He may he may you know he may want to talk. I think I think matter of fact, I think one of the conversations that we had, he um, he I think he might have referenced a, a, an interview that that you and I did. You know I need, what I'm I need, saying? I need a Herbie Lovebug interview. You need a Herbie I, I Love need that. Interview. I need. You that. know what? I'll talk. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. ask him. I'll talk. Bring, to him. bring it up. I'll talk to him. I'll talk you know, to him. if he wants to talk to me directly yeah, ahead no, of time. I talk to him. I talk to him. You know, because I'm going to paint him in a positive light. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I'm really going to really praise what he's done. Yeah, I mean, and look, I think, look, Herbie's, you know, Herbie's still, you know, you know, like I said, we all grew up together. And, you know, there's always there's always love there and, re and respect. And, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, we've actually been going back and forth a little bit over the last few weeks and months. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's a really, really special kind of dude. Um, like I said, you got to have the vision. You know, Reggie Hudlin had the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, Reggie Hudlin picked us to be in a house party. You know, because and 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 Tisha and Martin and Robin, you know, he was he was the quarterback. He's the director. He had the vision. Um, and I think um, I think Herbie, in my opinion, still has um, more to accomplish. You know, what I mean, his mind is. You know, he's musically. He's a. You know, he's a genius. So who knows, man? I'll run, I'll run it up the flagpole. We'll see. We'll see if anybody we'll see what happens. Like you know how it is. You you already told me there's certain people that you've been pursuing for a long time, and then 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 one day they just they just they're just down. They're down. Yep. Right. Yeah. For, for whatever reason. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. Yep. You don't care. Like all right, come all right. on in. Let's do it. Meet me on the call. But no, um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't get um, but you know what? Herbie Herbie is one of those guys like. He can live with his portrayal in the movie. You know, it wasn't always flattering. Right, it wasn't and negative he'll tell you yeah. that, that there was a lot of the stuff in there is true. Like, if it was that blatant and false, he would have shut it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm sure he had, you know, he might have had uh, some some rights uh, uh, to do. So, you know what I mean? So, he, you know, years later, we can all, hopefully we can, you know, admit the mistakes that we made and say, hey, you know, I wish I would have did this better or did that better. A lot of us that dealt with each other back in those days, you know, have those regrets. And, um, you know, as friends and as um, collaborators, you know, you try to let that, you know, let that go and, and, and focus on, man, you know, this, we bumped our heads a couple of times, but, but look at this mountain of awesome work and, and creativity uh, that we put together. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run it by him. Okay. <laughs> I'm yeah. a, I can't, I can't, I can't guarantee <laughs> <clears throat> anything but um let's see what happens yeah let's see what let's happens see what happen. but yeah it'll be oh trust me if you get herbie it'll be one of the great interviews of all time <laughs> well uh a few months ago vlad tv was trending on twitter for like two days my name was trending because okay. there was I a, must have seen it. there was a fake article that was blaming me for casanova two times uh getting busted by the feds on rico charges I did hear that. There was, a, there was a fake article saying that we're mentioning the paperwork, which which is not true. And then like people like Questlove were like retweeting it, telling people not to not to interview with Vlad TV and everything. It got it got kind of ugly. You know, I didn't really say anything at the time because it was really just a fake article. And sometimes addressing things ends up making them worse to a certain regard. But right. what happened was give it oxygen. A few a few months later, we actually got a hold of the audio from Casanova's bail hearing, which ended up getting denied. And you actually hear the feds say in the hearing, which we'll play a little clip of, that they're using Casanova's interview with Nick Cannon to deny his bail. Nick Cannon's name got mentioned twice. And in the defendant's own words, in a November 2019 radio interview with Nick Cannon, the defendant made clear that he is, quote unquote, still ape, that is, a member of Gorilla Stone. With regard to media interviews the defendant has done, defense counsel references, interviews where he said good things about the community, and he references that interviews where he mentions his violent past are about the violent past and have nothing to do with the present. I would just uh, reiterate the Nick Cannon interview from 2019 where he says still ape. So he's currently still a member of Gorilla Stone. The interview he yes. did with, with Nick Cannon was on Nick Cannon's radio show uh, in really? L.A. And what the feds were using was that Casanova in the Nick Cannon interview said, I'm still ape, meaning he is uh, still associates himself with this gang that they're trying to pin him on, the untouchable Gorilla Nation. Um, and, and they used that part from his interview to say that. Wow. Now... Earlier in the interview, he actually says, no, nah, I'm not really affiliated with that, whatever else, but the feds are going to use what they're going to use and, sure. and so forth. But it was just very interesting how all this time people were calling me the feds when 
Nick Cannon's interview actually got used in that particular in his case. And what have you have you since highlighted that or is oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely highlighting that because at the end of the day, is Nick Cannon the feds? No. Am I the feds? No. We just do interviews, and people are going to say what they're going to say. And I'm sure with you being on Vlad TV as a regular guest, I'm sure you get messages and DMs like, "Why are you working with the feds and with the police and all that?" A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> People probably tell you you're going to go to jail right after the next interview. <laughs> what are some of the craziest things people tell you on uh, social media? You know, I don't, I don't, really, I don't pay t- too much attention to that, to that kind of stuff, to be honest. Like, one of the things I, I will say is, um, you know, our, our interviews have, have done pretty well yeah. from, from, you know, from what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't, I don't really, I don't, I try not to read the comments because, <laughs> You know what I mean? You could have 99 wonderful, positive comments, <laughs> and that hundredth one will crush your fucking soul. <laughs> These motherfuckers, their Ruthless. comments, they will crush your soul. They will talk about your grandmama. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they will wish you dead. They will, I'm telling you, man. But, you know, um, like I said, I, I you know I, I base my decisions on on um, on my life and uh, and my dealings with a particular person, um, you know. But look, um, in in, the, in this cancel culture type of world, you know it's it's you know people try to wipe you out, man, and and try to wipe out oh, yeah. like all your all your equity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I got in trouble, when I bumped my head. You know, they try to cancel me, and uh, you know, and I'm 30 years in the game. You know what I mean? If you're around 30 years in the game, you're gonna bump your head from time to time. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know a celebrity that's been around that long that hasn't. But what you hope is, um, you know, if you if you if you're trying to make amends, that people understand that that you can be uh, for, forgiven, or you know, look 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 past it, and then look at look at the equity, look at look at someone's mountain of work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's it's easy. It's easy to throw stones from the sidelines, and people love to do it. What do you think about Flavor Flav and Boosie getting mistaken for one another? Who did that? Oh, it's been a thing. They, they both, like, went on Instagram to talk about it. Really? I guess, like, Boosie got mistaken for Flavor Flav, and then Flavor Flav. By who? White people? By just by ran, white people. Random people. <laughs> so, no, that's, that, that's all, like, white thing. <laughs> you know what's actually kind of funny, too, is that... I just interviewed Crunchy Black. Oh, my God. You could throw him in there, too. Well, when I mentioned to him, he goes, you know, when I lived in Vegas, people mista- were mistaking me for uh, Flavor Flav, too. Mm-hmm. White people. <laughs> so you could, throw, you could throw the three of them. Mainly white people. Though. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's the thing. Like, You're right. The, the three of them are probably the, three of the darkest hip-hop individuals. You know what I'm saying? But to me, they're different. They don't look, they don't look alike at all. I mean... Flavored, crunchy, and boozy. Yeah, that sounds like something some mom from South Dakota <laughs> thought. Like, you know what I'm saying? All y'all look alike, but they're all real individuals. I was watching um dude IG the other day, man. He's he just keeps it moving. Boozy just keep it moving, man. He got the new IG. Oh yeah, he got he, kicked he, off. He, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. <laughs> Kicked him Cabal, off of Facebook. Wait, I know. I didn't do my Instagram. come on, Vlad. Come on, Vlad. Come on, Vlad. Zuckerberg. <laughs> um, no, but he's back. He, he got beat back over one million. Like, man, he gets. No, no. He he got his original. The, the Boosie new IG, he got it back. He did? Yeah. Oh, okay. What they, what they suspended him for? Uh, yeah, the, for maybe okay, him fine. Time I, was out. Just like, <laughs> I was just like, wow, man. He just, he bounces back like. Incredibly, man. Boosie's a hustler, man. Boosie he hustles is. like nobody I've ever seen. I mean, the fact that he, he got shot in the legs, needed two operations, mm-hmm. and got on stage a couple of weeks later. He's walking he, now. He's, he's walking, walking now? now? Okay, because he was in a wheelchair in our last interview. Yeah, no, no. I seen, I seen him walking around his house the other day. Yeah, I mean, he said that he got off stage that first time. He said he cried. He was in so much pain. But then Ooh. once he got his back end money, he smiled. Woo. Oh. My goodness, yeah. Yep. Wow, but flavor, yeah, flavors. God, flavors. One of the. He's an old old friend, man. Oh yeah, yeah any yeah. crazy uh, flavor flavor stories? Oh God, what's the craziest? Because I've interviewed him and Chuck D. 
Yeah. Okay, well, you know, we used to tour with Public Enemy, like, all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, in the early 90s and stuff, they would always call us, and, you know, we'd come out and whatnot. Um, and I remember um, Flav was always, you know, he, he always brought his kids. He had a lot, I mean, he had a lot of kids now, but he had a lot of kids then, too, and they were, and they were little. So his kids would always be like around on tour and, you know, uh, invariably, you know what I'm saying? The kids running around, you know, they, they kick it in your room and this, this and that. Um, but one of the things I remember is that everybody just had this reputation and this uh, impression of flavor, like as this idiot, you know what I mean? Like, like he just, like he wasn't intelligent. And um, I'm not sure if I told you this before, but um, we were, all the groups were coming into some particular town. I, f I forgot what, it, uh, what what city it was. This was, I want to say, either 89 or 90. And we got to the hotel early, and the rooms weren't ready. So uh, all the groups are in the in the lobby. We, you know, we got to wait. We got to wait till they get clean the rooms, and, you know, then we get in there. And we're chilling in the lobby. Everybody's kicking it. And there's a grand piano in the lobby, a beautiful piano. And some of some cats are sitting on the bench and they're just like, burr, 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 you know, fucking around on the piano. Nobody know how to play the fucking piano. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, public enemy bus rolls up and here comes Flavor. And Flavor's like, <laughs> you know, you coming in, I coming in hot. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. Yo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yo, we got the piano. This is that. It's like he gonna come down and sit at the piano and play the piano. We just like, man, this motherfucker, what the fuck is he gonna do? This this beautiful Graham Steinway piano or whatever it is. Man, this dude get on this goddamn piano. He played like <laughs> he played like Mozart. <laughs> he was playing like he was we was like everybody was just like we we couldn't believe it. And he started hitting this is nah. Then he started playing uh Ribbon in the Sky, Stevie Wonder. Uh. Ribbon in the Sky for love. <laughs> like <laughs> and then he just said, see y'all later. <laughs> And he just fucking bounced and shit. And we were just like, like, what the fuck just happened? This, I've heard that before. He's like a, yeah. like a, he's like, you know, like a, he's like a savant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've heard that. Um, yeah, but, he, he plays like 10 instruments or something. Plays drums. He yeah. Plays, dude, he plays gang instruments, yeah. yo. That's, that's people don't understand that, man. Yeah. Um, uh, and what's his name could tell you, could speak to that. I know you had did that uh, interview with uh, Dr. Dre, Ed Lover and Dr. Yeah. Dre. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they, they 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 go. Nobody goes further back with flavor than than he, than he does. Right. He could tell you what, what all the different things he could do. There's nothing he couldn't do. He was just, you know, he was just flavor, man. You know what I mean? So, but 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 anytime I've run into him, like you know, probably probably the last time we did run into him was in Vegas. He came to um, when we had our residency at the Paris Hotel. He came through and and came and saw us. And um, you know, anytime we were performing in Vegas, Play and I. He would always come through, mm. and you know he's just a—he's a beautiful spirit, man. You know what I'm saying? He's—he's he's yeah, somebody he's a lot, a lot like a like a DMX. Like he gives you—you gonna get it, warts and all, but but it all comes with love. Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of, of old school, uh, I got to interview Melly Mel. No way. Yeah, my idol. Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding? Did you ask him about me? I did not. Damn it! I, I should have told you, man. Melly Mel is the reason why I became a rapper. Aha, okay. Melly Mel specifically is the reason why I became a rapper. When Rock. I was growing up, uh, his voice just, it just, I mean, we used to get these, um, these tapes, these cassette tapes from all the Grandmaster Flash shows. They would play at various high schools in New York City, Stevenson High School, Truman High School, uh, Bronx Science, they played at my school. You know what I mean? Different different places, and and um, we would listen to these these flash. They called them flash tapes, and I just listened to Melly Mel, and I was like, I was like thirteen or fourteen. And I was like, oh my god, this this dude sounds, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like just hitting you with the, you know, they fight just us, just the what you find, you find just us on the on the point the line. This just us working from dawn to dust. There's no justice to hunt just us. Child and ball with no state of mind. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Shit like that. Yep. Made me want to become a, a rapper, right? So fast forward, like, you know, we're in the game, you know, we're coming up and whatever like that. And every time um, after I got, I got introduced to Melly Mel, I would always tell him, I would, every time I would see him somewhere, I would go up to him and I would go, mm. like, 
and he'd be like, go ahead on, kid. Don't worry about it, man. Go on, man. Go on. You know, he was so modest and humble. I was like, dude. I was like, you don't understand. Like you, you're one of the, you're, you know, you're the, you're the greatest to me. Like you're, you're my inspiration. You know what I mean? And then you know, I get to know him. Like over the years, you know, we kind of cross each other's paths. And then one, one night, this was like, this was a few years back. We were doing, um, we were doing this TV show. I think it was, in, um, I don't know. We we were we were we were in the same city somewhere, right? And so, um, we were gonna go to a club. So he and I were gonna go to the club and meet up with some other cats. So I'm going to the club with Melly Mel, man, and Melly Mel is just, you know, he's all G'd up and fly and whatnot. And we're hanging out and we just had the best time. And it was just like, imagine hanging out, you know, like, I don't know, Vlad, like who who's your idol? You know, like uh, Dan Rather or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? With Mike Wallace. Oprah. Oprah, exactly. Imagine yeah. you got a chance to hang out with Oprah, and, you know, and just kick it and pick her brain and- yeah. Talk shop. Be a, you talk shop, exactly, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I'm doing this and that, and um, we had a we had an awesome, awesome time. Then we get back to the hotel, but I think by then I might have had like a little too much, you know what I'm saying? And so um, we're kicking it, and then here comes play, and I think our road manager at the time, Jeff Christie, was there as well, and they were trying to they were trying to get me to my room. You know, they're just like, oh, yo, man, kids, kids a little, kids a little tipsy, man. Let's just let's get him to his room. And so they're all taking me to my room. You know what I'm saying? They're all kind of escorting me to my room by four or five motherfuckers, shit. So I get up in there and I'm just like, you know, and then you know how it is when when you feel like you're being handled, like you got a little too much, you feel like you're being handled. I was like, hey, hey, man, I'm fine, okay? Just leave me alone, all right? And get out of my room and take Melly Mel with you. I'm, I'm wilding, yo. And everyone's laughing like this drunk motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? But then the next day you find out about it. And I was like, yo, dude, man, I'm so sorry, bro. He was like, oh man, that's all okay, man. You know, but Melly Mel, man, man, that was, you know, I think I saw some bits of that. I didn't see the whole thing. I want to mm -hmm. watch the whole thing. He probably had the best stories. I mean, he's the, he's the architect, man. He is, he he's is. the I architect. Mean, he changed the trajectory of the yeah. music. Of, mu of music. Yeah. I mean, Period. the message. Stop it. Uh, basically solidified hip hop as an actual right. art form as opposed to just what could have been just something that came and went. Yeah. Uh, you know, the message sort of was the first serious song in hip hop where the way he said, it's not just about rappers rapping about rapping. You know what I mean? Crazy. And, and the poetry and the guy in it, and the other guy just passed away. Yeah. Duke Booty. Duke Booty, right? Like yep. a few months ago or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Nah, I mean, he's, he's amazing, man. He's 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 just an amazing dude, and like I said, you know the time that we we got to hang out, you literally just I'm just like, Melly Mel, yeah, you know what I'm saying like, and you know and so super smart, and you know now you know what I'm saying. I, I'm sure there was a time when you know when they were doing that thing where they was out there wilding and whatnot, but he ain't about that now. Great shape, Great built shape. better than both of us. Melly Mel, <laughs> and he's older. Melly Mel will fuck you fuck up, fuck you up, <laughs> and go. <laughs> <laughs> you know where that came from? No, Tony the Tiger. Really? That's what he told me. Yeah, Frosted Flakes. Shit, he did it way better than Tony. I know, right? You know, yo, I told you. I, did I tell you this story? I, uh, the dude that did Tony the Tiger, right? He passed away like three, four years ago. Okay. So I get a call from um, my agent, my voiceover agent, like about a week after this dude is dead. And it's like, hey man, can you do a Tony the Tiger? I said, what? I said, the motherfucker just died last week. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, it's an opening. <laughs> He's like, yo, he said, yo they, they, they're asking around, can you, do, can you do a Tony the Tiger? I said, right. <laughs> it's the taste America's come to love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Right. <laughs> Man, I worked on that shit for like two, three days. I went in there. I was like, I'm getting this motherfucker, man. Didn't get it. That guy did not get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was not great. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, that might be some cool shit. Like you roll up on a chick at the bar. And, you know what I'm saying? You know I do the voice with Tony at the time. You know, you know, you know, you, know. Oh, you want some Frosted Flakes? I, I got yeah, some all of I got some. I got that Tony the Tiger money. <laughs>
<laughs> um, but yeah, that just goes to show you, bro, when 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 you're over, man. They, I was like, yo, didn't the dude just die like a few days ago? Like, yeah, man, they just need a new Tony. What are you doing? <laughs> I went in twice on that, man. Uh. I went in that one time, and then like a like about six months later, they were asking around again. Mm. Man, I worked. I was, that was one of them joints you work on, man. I was, I was walking around. My girlfriend was mad. She said, stop talking like Tony the fucking tiger. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before I let you go, I just want to point out that I feel that it was our uh, first interview that triggered the remake of the song Oak Cliff, That's My Hood. No. Did they remake it? There's a new version of Oak Cliff, That's My Hood, featuring Trap Boy Freddy, Yellow Beezy, Young Nino, Hot Boy Star, and Smurf Franklin. They redid it. And I feel like the only reason it got redid was because of our interview where you actually, can we go ahead and hear a, an Oak Cliff, That's My oh, Hood? Oh, yeah. And you know what You know what they told me? They told me I, like, I said it like a little bit wrong, but I don't, yeah. like, I don't give a f- You know what I'm saying? Like, you get what I'm saying. Oak Cliff, That's My Hood. Let it be known. Let it be understood. Oak Cliff. <laughs> If I would let it be so like it would be understood. No, no, and I and I think um 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 money and I went back and forth like on Instagram a couple of times. I who? think uh, Young Nino because okay. remember at the time well, I didn't know we didn't the, know who. Yeah, we he's on who, the song. Yeah, he well he's the original. Oh, okay. He's it. It was it was, ah. his, it was his song original. Aha. Okay. Yeah. So I think we went back and forth. I was like, ah right, man, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like yo, it was you know it's all love. Boom, boom, boom. My people from Dallas told me about the record, whatever, whatever. Man, I should have been in that video. What you talking about? Come on, man. Young Nino. Could you do your boy like that? You talking right. About? Well, there's actually a remake. That there's a music video for oh, it. I gotta it's got see half that, a million man. views. Really? Uh, you, you, think, you think we inspired that? Is that what you're saying? I mean, how old is that song? It's it's no it's it's not it's not a recent. That's song. That's what I'm saying. It's what a 20 year old song. I don't know if it's that old, but but it, it ain't. 15 it, years, 10 years. I don't know. I don't know about the original, but it's at least God, I don't know several years. Put it that way because the the radio station, the ticket in Dallas that that I affiliated with, they sampled it, and they, you know that's how I know it. They used to throw it in the they used to throw it in the mix. No, it, I don't think it's a recent record. I, I to to your point, I don't think it's a recent record. Yo, you know what I meant to ask you. Is, did I did I see did I see this wrong like like the the last time we did something um was it the interview when you when you uh, we were talking about Ice Cube and NWA yeah. yeah like that got like like stupid views right right the one about the yeah don't what even saying, mess with us we getting fucked n- n- yeah that one yo that was just like it was like like over a million yep what was, that was like Cer- certain things just react certain things just, just certain things just react I mean listen. That was I. I thought I had to go back. I was like, "Where?" Because you know, all the ones that thing were consistent. You know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, or whatever like that. But that one just, yeah, that that thing that, that one popped right there. Yeah, uh, kid play on Ice Cube mocking him over his clean image after NWA got banned. Yeah, but yeah. that's the yeah. But to almost your point, million, that's like the right title. Nine hundred ten thousand views right now as we speak. Uh, yeah, man. Listen, what we do is we throw stuff out there, and. The world is going to do what it's going to do with it. Like, do I want any sort of credit for having the song Oak Cliff redone? <laughs> no, of course not. No, I'm just talking right. shit right now. But do no, I want but any what, no, what nobody talking about. I'll well, tell you what. No that, one was talking about that song. Not to say no, that wasn't a and classic I, and song. I bet but, you, and, and I bet you that episode had a lot of hits on it. Yeah. The, the Oak Cliff one. I, yeah. be, I bet you that did. Because I know I got a lot of uh, hits behind that. People was like, oh, shit, dude, no, you know Oak Cliff. Everybody from Texas was hitting me up. Yeah, they got like 300,000 views. So yeah. so what I'm saying is we throw the stuff out there. I remember me and Too Short had a conversations about it, about how, like, you know, some of his phrases and what, you know, like the, you know, uh, the whole easy thing, you know, Yeezy, mm-hmm. uh, Wheezy, whatever, right. that came from a Too Short and E-40 song, uh, Rapper's Ball. Right, and that's the first time they're using the whole, you know, oh, easy for sheezy, you yeah. know, off the top yeah. of easy. Like, yeah. that was the first time that went on a record. I remember that song. Right, and then, you know, me and Tushar were talking ball. about how later on, yeah, Kanye calls himself Yeezy, you know. Yeah, Wayne calls Wayne himself, calls himself Wheezy. Wheezy. Chris Breezy. Chris Breezy. You Dre, know, Drake calls himself Jeezy. Drizzy. Drizzy is the same way. Yeah, Jeezy. Uh, young it's all Jeezy. Same. And he's like, Hey man, this is what we do. We throw this stuff out in the world, and people kind of do their own little versions of it, and it's all good. Like, why why get mad that someone runs with something that you put out there? That's what you're supposed to do. That's what they're, they're supposed yeah. to. I mean, you know, this, run with this this stuff that. Trust me, this stuff that 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 we've done over the years that that people have kind of glommed and kind of 
yeah. you know, worked into their 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 vibe. You know what I'm saying? There's, I mean, it, it, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, I go on the internet all the time and I see, um, you know, my image or me and Play's image of of, of you know merchandise and 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 things that are sold that we don't get we don't get nothing about and then gonna get nothing from. Hmm. And I let them eat. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I we look at it sometimes as promotion. I mean, now we we do our own things, but. You know, small, you know, some cats trying to do their thing, whatever. I you know, I'll, I'll let the universe take care of that, man. It's hard to chase down every Tom, Dick, and Harry yeah. that put my face on the shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't got, I ain't got time for that. I'd rather, you know, you know, what we've done is, you know, create our own, you know, the merch companies and, and take advantage of it and put the images out that we want. But right. it's all promotion. I mean, you know, people are buying them, so that means, that means yeah. you still like us. I mean, you got the Kid and Blade shirt. Uh, Kid and Blade. Blade. See right, we're doing that. Matter, matter of fact, yeah, can I promote my yeah. Kid and Blade? Um, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, we're on the merch tip. You know what I'm saying? You can go to Real okay, Kid and Blade. Go ahead, go ahead and show the shirt real quick. All right. Yeah, get all these muscles, man. What's wrong with <laughs> that, that 12 pack. Get all this muscle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, you can go always go to realkidandblaze.com. You know, we mm -hmm. we we uh, we're slanging uh, hoodies and t-shirts. And also, too, most importantly, uh, we dropped a, a new single and video, uh, my song Horizon. The artist's name is Biscuit. Uh -huh, I know Biscuit. B-I-Z-K-I-T, mm -hmm. right? Featuring me, featuring Kid. Uh, the song's available on all uh, streaming platforms. The video uh, just dropped as well. Uh, and we're we're real happy about it. So, uh, you know, check yeah. us out. And you know, speaking about weed, uh, you know, now New York is actually legalized marijuana. You know, as as a New Yorker who's probably been sneaking weed around for for decades, now you can actually legally smoke it. And I believe West Virginia is the first Southern state. Getting that weed. No, Virginia. Virginia becomes the first Southern state to legalize marijuana. Uh, so Virginia, slowly, first in weed, first in slavery, last in weed. <laughs> I ain't touching that one. Uh, you know, it seems like weed is now becoming a legal thing in America, which is a great thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I I'm hoping that yeah, I mean, the laws know. start to change. People sure. have been incarcerated. You know, Free Rollo, who's, who's locked up, you know, for pushing a bunch of weed. Hopefully he gets out. And everyone else who kind of got caught up in the system over a substance that's now becoming legal. Hopefully, yeah. you know. You know what? I think we were fortunate. I feel fortunate to have been living in California as long as as long as I have because it's like a different planet out here. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it, you know, New York was, you know, those other states were pretty repressive when it when it comes to that. And like you said, a lot of a lot of uh, good people got caught up in that, and uh, you know, lives got ruined. So yeah, if if there's a way you can kind of um, rectify that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I was just talking with some cats the other day, um, some people we might be going into business with on a Kid and Blaze tip, and um, uh, he was a, a ex ex veteran, and um, you know we talked about how the um, you know the government will they'll let you get any amount of pills that you want, you know, for these vets that are coming back with PTSD and everything, and you know they'll pill you up all you want, and that's those are the those are the vets that are you know, kidnapping a family and killing the family and just bugging, and, and but they won't pay for you weed. Mm. You know, and 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 personally, this particular person told me as a vet, you know, his whole life turned around. You hear so many stories about it when they started smoking weed and got off them pills, got off the opioids. Mm. You know, yeah. um, so that's part of the thing. You know, one of the things that we're we're trying to do as a part of Kid and Blaze is have a kind of humanitarian, philanthropic side of it, and in terms of helping people health wise you know in terms of cannabis and that that area is called kid and cure so you know like mm. when you hear the little kids you know having you know problems and they need the cbd but certain states like you know i know new jersey for the longest uh you refuse to even you know get get medicine for for the little kids like that um uh, you know if we can help you know or, or people that are in pain that don't want to be on the pills anymore you know that's what that's what the kid and cure aspect is about as well so uh, we're excited about that. You know, one of the things about the pandemic is you're almost, you're almost forced to be on lockdown. Well, this is when you have to create. That's why we're making music. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, we're, we're trying to get the, the Kid and Blaze and Kid and Cure business uh, uh, rocking uh, to, the, to the extent that we can. Dope. 
Dope. That's what's up. <laughs> Kid, man, always a pleasure. Always hey. a pleasure, man. Until next time. Until next time. <laughs> Vlad. <laughs> hey, go to work on the fellas too, man. Oh, you know, you make them want to do the things we do. You go to keep it up. All right. You, you hear this guy? <laughs> Drums. Drums. You, you going to let him talk to me like that? Huh? Peace. Until next time.